first and foremost, thank you, BW Legal, to invite me for this. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon. I see the hall half empty, but that's okay. Uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, today being Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are in, in the room and who are likely to join later in the evening. Uh, when I was asked to talk about the intersection between GCs and the law firms, I was wondering what do I speak? Uh, when I started my career uh, about 33 years back, there was only one law firm in Delhi. That was J.B. Dadachanji, right? And uh, we used to be told in Unilever that, have you been to the temple? So every day you had to go to J.B. Dadachanji's office and you were there. But at that point of time, I think, interestingly, while law as a profession was also rising, I think there was also uh, general counsels, d various companies started hiring general counsels. In fact, when I just joined Unilever as general counsel after le not joining civil services, I was considered I was a fool in my batch. But, but I continued to be where I was. Uh, so first, let me talk about how the general counsel's world has moved on. And as I believe economy plays a very big role in this, as the economy grows, everything is based on economics. Because there is a cost factor and there are people, there are general counsels, and, and companies have started realizing that when you split corporate work into the 80-20 principle, 80% 80 is regular, routine, contractual work, which earlier used to go to law firms or individual lawyers. Now, more and more in-house people have started doing it. There's 20% which needs far greater expertise, and obviously that's where the law firms become relevant. Over a period of time, again, coming back to economics, it is, it, and this is my personal, if I give a few contrary views, don't hold, don't kill me for this, because I've seen the world from the other side. And the reason why I say this is that law firms have to be relevant to the clients. It's very important. Somewhere we drift from the profession of law, it's become the business of law. The moment you are into business of law, targets, billing, you know, there comes a time where the company starts realizing why we engage in this law firm. So it's about relevance. I have not seen till date, and I say this with complete humility, I have never seen a law firm invest on that client. Investment is not meeting. Investment is not having a cup of tea. Investment is about how many law firms have actually gone and seen what business that client does. How many lawyers have actually been to the factories to see how, like I remember when I was briefing a law firm and my last company was Motherson, wiring harness. The lawyers did not know what a wiring harness was, but they were drafting shareholder agreements and all of that. Because at the end of the day, be relevant. You know, clients are not only for billing. You have to invest into the clients, and invest doesn't mean pay money or buy their shares, but invest, understand their business. And that's where, and I always believe that GCs and, and law firms are complementary to each other. Nobody is in competition to each other, but please complement. The second most important thing as the GC world, it's so easy. And if you see the, see the narrative of law firms, how uh, J.B. Dalachanji disappeared, after that came other law firms, law firms have split. So every, there is a churn that is happening at that end. And there are, maybe in uh, 1990 there was one law firm, today there will be about 100 law firms in Delhi, if not more. Now, the law firms are top tier law firms, mid tier law firms, then specialized boutique law firms and all of that. The fact is that my biggest worry is that we are getting into the business of law. We are not getting into the profession of law. Law firms are, are, have to be very, very relevant. Otherwise what's happening, and I, I can say this with, in, in house, the teams are becoming larger and larger. Earlier the teams used to be small. Uh, there are a couple of colleagues, uh, friends who were in the, in the GC world earlier, I know. Small teams, five, seven. Today, today, 
general council offices have 25 members. Why have they built it that big? Just somewhere economics has started playing. And who are, they also hire lawyers from the same institutes that you hire and they create a small. It's like, I call this as mini law firms within the general council office. There are, like in, in my past uh, company, we had, we have four lawyers who used to do only m and and they were specialist m and So we used to only go to the law firm only for the vetting at the top end. And the other thing, please don't underestimate or under, uh, don't miss the opportunity. General counsels are now no more India limited. They get to see the best practices because companies are large, companies are multinationals, they get best practices from various law firms across the world and they bring it back to the, their table. And that's how they're building their in-house, I would say in-house law firms in a manner of speaking. Now, again, coming back to how can you be relevant? It's important for me to share that. Be precise, be concise in what you are advising. Don't hide behind opinions. Have, be, a, be a stakeholder in that process. I have seen many a times that you get a 10-page opinion, out of which the opinion is only one paragraph. Nine pages are written to caveat the whole system. Now, everything that you s share with your client is not necessarily going to be held. Because you have to partner. You can't say that I'll give you the opinion. It's up to you take it or leave it. Because if you are my counsel, you have to be with me in good and bad times as well. So, so some. Did I hear something? So, so the question is that being relevant. The other thing is that provide tips to your general counsel because they they are very hard pressed. They have to take decisions on if they are if they don't have all the information. The chairman calls in the morning and says that, can you give me a view in half an hour time? Now, the general counsel cannot obviously within half an hour. If you are their counsels, please keep giving them some, if there are any developments that is happening or any of that. Spend time with the general counsel to understand how the general counsel's day operates, what are the key challenges. I have always believed if a, if a law firm com comes to my office, it is all billable. Somewhere we need to understand between what is billable and what's investment. No investment, every business will come down, e even if it is the legal profession. And please do that. Now, uh, I will not touch upon billing, how you invest into your, your skill enhancement of your lawyers. I have I've seen opinions where the opinions are, are so outdated in, in the context, and people don't even understand what's the question that's being asked. Somewhere, we, we go to law firms based on the competence of a senior partner. The senior partner has not even seen the opinion. The opinion comes to you. It, it tells you that it has become an assembly line where you're churning. Somewhere, and that's where your relevance starts depleting day by day. The second thing, I would, I would be very happy to hear law firms tell me, don't contest this matter. If a, if a client comes and says, I have this problem, I have not heard a single law firm telling me, don't contest, settle this matter, or tell your chairman that this is not worth your time. This is good money after bad money. There was only one instance where long ago we had uh, drawn for an opinion to Mr. Salve. Mr. Salve said, tell your chairman he want, if he wants to demolish the brand, it, I will contest this matter. And that was it. So, so the question is that learn also to say, don't always try to please your counsel. Because one time you please, but the impact over a period of time, the counsel gets to know. And over a period of time, the feedback, and therefore, you know, the change happens. And, uh, and gone are those days where you get briefs based on you know the chairman, you know somebody. It's these days, at the end of the day, but stops with the general counsel. And more and more companies are doing that. I know many, many very senior law firms who tried to reach out, and uh, when we would say that we don't have the time, or you know, they would go to the chairman thinking that they didn't bypass. It doesn't happen anymore because the boards, the boards are very, very careful about it. 
they do not allow any kind of nepotism to happen. They, I have had several instances, and so many of my GC colleagues will bear with me for that, that the board doesn't want to see an opinion. They want to hear the opinion of the GC. And how do you arm the GC with that opinion? And please work in that direction so that you, you become the backbone. It's a, it's a complementary system. They are lawyers, you are lawyers. I remember many, many years back when we used to go to the law firms, we were not even treated like lawyers. We were not even treated like lawyers. I will tell you, you listen. My friends, the world is changing. The world is changing and GCs are playing a far, far bigger role. Their relevance has become far important. And the companies are no more willing to spend money on destructive litigation. And I can say this with pride in my previous company. We have zero litigation. Zero. Mother's and uh, for a $26 billion company around the world, we have zero litigation except for one odd prostitution that's happened, one odd. But we don't get litigation at all because the drive is towards reduced litigation. Do we don't have legal work? We do a lot of legal work. We do so much. We spend all our energies towards productive uh, movement and use law for the enhancement of the business. So coming back to the relevance, the intersection, I would urge there's, there is a lot of relevance uh, between GCs and, in a, in, and law firms. Please be cognizant. Try to understand your client. I have, I'm sorry to say this, but I, even the largest law firms in this country don't have, wouldn't have even read your annual report. You are their, their client for the last 12, five years. They don't even read your annual report. They didn't, don't even know which are your new lines of business. Now, the same counsel, who is a very good m and guy, will now start advising you on aviation. And the moment you say, no, you are not in aviation, they'll, they'll get you. So your billing will continue to drop. But at the end of the day, is your advice coming, which is very, very relevant, what you want. So broadly, three or four points stay relevant to your client. Be concise and precise. Keep giving tips from time to time to your council so that the council believes that you are with the council and not you are not there only for billing. And last but not the least, uh, if there is a new development that is happening, if there is a new method, allow give impetus to the general councils to innovate. Because if they survive, at the end of the day, they are the guys who cut the bills. They are the guys who pay the checks. So please help them because. If you don't have that confidence, somewhere, you know, the churn will start happening. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll leave it. I wish BW Legal a fantastic day today. And for all of you, for the various panels, one last uh, unsolicited feedback. I was looking at the agenda of the day. There's a, there's a session in the evening on corporate governance. But I'm sorry to say, I didn't see a single corporate person on that panel. It's all lawyers, lawyers. The last mile of corporate governance is always done by in-house people. Or you could have had some CEO. But if you don't have the corporate represented in corporate governance panel, I don't know what kind of corporate governance we are talking about here. So with that, I'll, I'll pause. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take. Otherwise, wish you all a fantastic day today. Thank you.